thanks to a certain greedy cartoon mouse, adaptations have kind of started to not be all that great. They feel rushed, greedy, made just for the money, soulless. But that does bring up an interesting question. With all these honestly just bad adaptations going around, is there a correct way to adapt something? Is there a correct way to adapt an older franchise, an older series, an older myth? It's hard not to know about Greek mythology, both in the webtoon world and just everyday life. There are so many games, videos, movies, books, musicals, songs, and even actual college classes that I've taken that talk or include topics of Greek mythology. Shout out to Overly Sarcastic Productions, Kid Icarus, and that epic soundtrack for all wildly different reasons. It's also pretty widely known in the webtoon space because of one major myth. Well, one major myth and a major couple. Zeus and Hera. Persephone and Hades. Duh. The power couple. Tall, dark, and handsome, and Pinkie Pie from My Little Pony. This power couple is everywhere. And no, I'm not just talking about Laurel Olympus. There are also a bunch of canvas series that explore this exact relationship. One of my favorites being Punderworld, but Laurel Olympus is a pretty standout series based on this relationship. Love it or hate it, and based on your comments you seem to lean one way more than the other, Laurel Olympus and the Greek myth of Persephone and Hades is a pretty standout myth. I made a video a while back talking about this, and while I recommend you watch most stuff on my channel, please don't watch that one. It was made a long time ago, and it is not well made. But Persephone and Hades is a kind of honestly our modern day Romeo and Juliet, even though it is it is older than Romeo and Juliet, and it is like canonically just worse morality wise and all that stuff. She gets kidnapped, there's in. But, but we've somehow managed to figure out a way to romanticize it. And I mean, hey, at least they stay together, Romeo and Juliet. Whatever the reason there are so many different versions of this tale, they're here to stay. And I do usually enjoy them. Yes, even Lore Olympus. However, no matter your thoughts on Lore Olympus specifically, the Persephone and Hades myth is popular and overall really solid. Having a Greek mythology series with Greek gods that actually love each other, and they usually fix most of the problems with the original myth. But today isn't about analyzing the changes that happen in just one series, it's about analyzing the changes that happen in these two series. Ha <laughs> ha got you. Webtoon surprisingly doesn't have a lot of Greek mythology originals. At least none that look outside that Persephone and Hades relationship. Which is honestly a shame. The Pantheon is much larger than just one relationship, and the little I know about Greek mythology, it all seems really fun and really solid, especially for action fans like myself. In fact, the only big series that even touches on some of this stuff is Omniscient Reader, delivering a different Persephone, a different Hades, a different underworld. It's not in the main adventure, it's more of a side story, but it's still cool seeing all this stuff in a different light. But instead, we're looking at a series that is full-on Greek pantheon, funnily enough, called Pantheon. Pantheon actually follows someone who doesn't exist in the Greek pantheon, at least doesn't exist in the 30 seconds I googled it. That being Corbin, a demigod. Though not a demigod through normal means. You see, when Corbin was younger, he traveled down to the underworld, as kids do. And while talking to Hades, the king of the underworld, who is being his typical, actually just really nice self, Corbin grabs onto his bidens, gaining a portion of his powers. Which is a problem. Not because Hades lost some of his power, but because of the prophecy. These Greek gods loved themselves a dumb prophecy, but the prophecy is actually just not even explained to us at all. But oh boy, is it somehow important. It's how we start the series, that being the big three of Zeus, Hades, and Poseidon gathering together to meet the Grey Sisters, likely the Fates, to discuss a prophecy and yada yada yada. The series is still pretty new, and there's only really been some lore developed and two major moments. The first one, and technically the bigger one, but not what we're talking about today, is an entire arc of Corbin fighting his inner demon, that being his best friend that he foolishly killed. As when they were younger, they wanted to be recognized as mighty adventurers, they wanted to have songs written about them. But when facing a minotaur, it leads to his death. This death has clearly weighed on Corbin for a long time. We see him visit his grave at the beginning of the series, and when he's becoming a god, as his body tries to absorb the hell ambrosia, he literally has to fight his inner demons, eventually being able to absorb it and being the new king of the underworld. I'll get back to that. But I wanted to talk about something else. 
a technically smaller moment, but still wildly important. We meet a lot of the Greek pantheon. Of course, being in the underworld, we got Hades, Thanatos, we got Nyx. Uh, we also got the big three, Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, we got Hera, even Medusa, Hercules, Perseus, and maybe a slight hint of Achilles? Honestly, knowing the Greek pantheon ain't exactly my strong suit, but it was last week's chapter that made me really want to make a video about this series. I brought up Lore Olympus and these other Persephone and Hades stories for two reasons. First is that it's probably the most Greek mythology on Webtoon. It's what people know. But secondly, and more importantly, from the Persephone in Hades myth is Persephone herself. Pantheum kind of stands in direct opposition to what we expect from a Greek mythology series. For example, I mentioned Medusa, Hercules, and Perseus. Medusa and Perseus being introduced in a battle between the two. But interestingly, out of the two of them, it's Perseus. The one Google calls the great Greek hero and slayer of monsters before the days of Hercules that is presented as the villain. In Pantheum, it's Medusa that's shown to be in the rights. When she's introduced, she's confined herself in a temple far away from others. She didn't want to fight, she didn't want to turn people into stone. She was even very willing to accept her death when Perseus goes to stab her. Even the tiny we get about Hercules ain't exactly pretty. Pantheum is all about flipping that script, changing how we think of not just one myth, but the entire Greek mythology, and this is no clearer than with Persephone. But to address that, we should talk about the original myth. Now, to be clear, when I say original myth, there is no one original myth, mainly because these stories were told rather than read. So details change from person to person. And while it was eventually written down, the very original story wasn't. I'll be honest, this isn't my strong suit. If you want more, you should definitely watch Overly Sarcastic Productions 20 minute video on the myth, since I definitely cannot cover everything here. But the general idea is that this love story, I mean, it wasn't really a love story, but it was more love than in most Greek mythologies. But let's be real, sorry to burst your bubble, most Greek love stories weren't exactly love stories. Not only was there an incest thing, but it also involved Hades abducting Persephone because he loves her and Zeus said it was okay. First things first, if Zeus says it's okay, you might want to get a second opinion. Demeter got sad, Hades let Persephone up, but also gave her pomegranate seeds so she has to come back down to the underworld. Now out of all the myths, it's not the worst one by a landslide, but it definitely involves grabbing someone without their consent, taking them away from their home and family, and incest, which is always a plus. But this is also why any take that Lore Olympus makes the myth worse is just flat out wrong. Is Lore Olympus a perfect series? <laughs> no, definitely not. I have thoughts about it and so does everyone else. But the original myth has a lot more terrible things. But saying it's worse is just flat out wrong. Most change the myth to give Persephone more agency and more power. Lore Olympus, she willingly goes down to the underworld. Punderworld, she accidentally goes down with Hades after a fight with Demeter. Even the canvas series, oh boy, Hades and Persephone and other gods' ficlets, having one of the most faithful adaptions of the original myth, gives Persephone more agency and more power and cleans up some of the original myth. But this is where Pantheum yet again kind of flips the script. Because in one of the most recent chapters, we learn that Persephone kills Hades. She goes on this justified rant, cursing Hades for kidnapping her, feeling sorrow and sadness for her mother, disdain for her father, even talking about a separate lover. All of this leading to her admitting that she killed Hades. None of this is in the original myth. Persephone and Hades were one of the healthiest couples in the Greek pantheon. They didn't cheat on each other, which it's, it's sad that in the Greek pantheon, not cheating on your partner is considered healthy and not just a normal thing, but that's besides the point. But honestly, I don't really care if it's not original or true because it's just really cool. Pantheum gives us a more real Greek mythology. Of course Persephone, someone who was abducted away from her friends, her family, her home, someone forced to stay with someone somewhere she didn't get to choose would grow angry and bitter. Of course Hercules, Perseus, and maybe Achilles aren't solely heroes. Those are just the stories we hear about them. Of course Medusa, someone doomed to turn any living thing, not just men in this series, into stone, would resign herself away, sealing herself off from society, to live around no one, 
to make sure no one got turned into stone, that no one would die in her presence, living a lonely, sad, and cursed existence. When I say real, I think more, it makes sense. These are the natural progression of things. Anger, hatred, deification, isolation. All of these things make sense with the story. Does it make Pantheum a better version of the myth? No. Not because it's not a really good series so far with a lot of potential, but because who, who cares, right? Who cares? Like, yeah, some of you fantasy action lovers would prefer this to any of the Persephone or Hades love stories, and others would like it the other way around, preferring that love story to the action. But I don't really see one side being right and one side being wrong. Both are really fun series in my view. Every adaptation we have of a myth is inherently a wrong adaptation of the myth. It is inherently not true to the source material. And honestly, I don't care that it's not true to the source material, because the source material is often messed up. So who cares if it is or isn't how the myth was supposed to be a long time ago? As long as you're enjoying yourself and no one's getting hurt by it, I don't see a right or a wrong way to adapt a myth. And I think Pantheum is taking advantage of this by giving us a story set in the Greek Pantheon like we've never seen before. So make sure you read Pantheum, updating every week on Webtoon.